For those who don't know, this time last week I posted a video showcasing some hidden entrances, ways to completely conceal a base so that nobody could find it. But another way of keeping your base secure is to actually make use of Minecraft security systems. Things like combination locks, you have various different keys that you could use. Just a whole bunch of different bits and pieces that will allow you to keep your items safe. Now in today's video we are going to be taking a look at a whole bunch of them, so let's crack on. But before we do, I just want to address that one person that I can already feel typing a comment down in the comment section saying something like, well I'm just going to grab my pickaxe and punch through the door, or I'm going to grab my TNT and blow everything up. Yes, you could do both of those things, but that's kind of not the point. So let's move on and take a look at the awesome redstone designs. So these first few are the simplest of the simplest of the simplest of designs. All of these have been featured in various different videos before, so I'm going to cover all of them in probably about a minute. So first things first, we've got the lever combination lock. Any of the levers that you want to be flicked downwards for the combination, you place a redstone torch behind it. If you want a lever to be upwards, then you just place redstone dust behind it. And if you get the combination right, then that should run out into a redstone torch which will give us a redstone output. It's a really simple AND gate design, but it can actually give you a decent number of combinations if you have a large number of levers. Design number two is the item frame combination lock. This thing will only give a redstone output if the item is in the correct position in the item frame. And the way that we control that is by adding or removing items inside this chest right here. Now, if you want to understand all of the logic behind this thing, I would highly suggest checking out my video explaining how comparators function and how we can use them in circuits like this but this thing is incredibly simple and easy to build and this should give you all of the information you need. And finally, for the simple set, we have got the card reader combination lock. Now this thing is probably the most secure combination lock out of all of them featured so far simply because it depends on items. Now not only is there a large number of items in Minecraft, but there's also a large number of names that you can give to those items. In fact, it's a completely ridiculous number of names that you can give to the items. We're talking more than the number of stars or particles in the universe. Huge, absolutely huge. And the good news is, is that we've got ourselves a dropper running into a hopper and then an item filter out the back of the hopper and it will give a redstone output if the correct item is put in the dropper and sent through the system. So that right there is a simple ones completed. This world can be found down in the description if you do want to check them out in a little bit more detail. But now let's move on to the slightly more ridiculous designs because let's face it, they're a tiny bit more fun. Now I'm going to ask you guys a quick question. What's better than one item combination lock? Four of them. I would say that four item combination locks is considerably better than one because we now have four times as many possible combinations, which is pretty redundant considering how ridiculous that number is, but it's always good to go a little bit over the top. So all we have to do is place in one piece of lapis, one block of gold, one block of iron, and one diamond, and they will all be submitted into the system. And if we pop around the back, you can see we have got our combination right, and we have a redstone output going through our redstone lamp right here. Now, I know this system might look a little bit complicated, but I can promise you it's actually really very simple. We've got a sorting system, we have got some RS null latches, we've got an AND gate, and then this line over here is the reset line. So if we place the correct item inside the system, that will briefly power this redstone right here, which will send that item through this dropper and out into this hopper. Now that will trigger the RS null latch, and that means that we have got that combination right. So as you can see, that comparator is powered. Now to unpower this redstone line, all of these RS null latches have to be triggered. So we have to trigger this one, this one, and this one. All of these comparators will be on, all of these redstone torches will be off, which means that our redstone torch at the end will turn on, meaning that we have ourselves a redstone output. So that's how you get the correct combination. The only slight issue is, is that if you place any wrong item inside the system, so say for example, we have got this one right, and then we've also got this one right as well, so we've got the diamonds, we've even got the lapis as well, so we are three quarters of the way there, then we decide to try out light blue wool. As you can see, it will trigger this comparator at the end, which will actually reset all of the RS null latches, meaning that you have to start from the beginning. Now that makes this thing incredibly difficult to crack. Now I'm just going to warn you, this system right here is incredibly noisy, but it does have just over 20,000 possible combinations, which I would say makes it pretty good. All you have to do is you have to place the correct music disc in each one of these note blocks right here, and then you will get yourself a redstone output out the back. Now as you can hear, it doesn't sound particularly good. <laughs> <laughs> that is seriously one of the worst noises I've ever heard, but it's functional, and it's also quite quirky. I regret making this. 
I seriously regret making this. Now that that horrible racket has stopped, I think it's about time that we take a look at the redstone behind this thing. And for those of you who are a little bit observant, you might notice that this circuit right here, and this one, and the other two, look very similar to the item frame circuit. And that's because they are exactly the same. All we're doing is we're taking a signal strength from this jukebox right here, and we're running it through the system. And then we're cutting it off using a chest with some items on the inside. Now, for those of you who don't know, music discs actually give off a specific signal strength when they're placed on the inside of a jukebox. This one gives off a signal strength of one, this one gives off a signal strength of two, three, four, five, six, and so on and so forth, all the way up to 12. Now, the way that our redstone circuit works is we want our comparator to give off a signal strength of one. We don't want this redstone to be powered because that means that the combination is incorrect. This is the only piece of redstone that we want to be powered. Now, that's absolutely fine if, for example, we have something that will only give off a signal strength of one. So there's nothing inside this chest right here, and it's only powering this redstone because this only gives off a signal strength of one. But say, for example, we have the music disc cat, that actually gives off a signal strength of two. So we have to put our comparator into subtract mode, and we have to subtract a little bit of the signal that would have been given off to make it so that it only powers this block. I hope that makes sense. That's how the system works. And then obviously you combine that those four together, put them into an AND gate, and then you have one redstone output. All very confusing stuff. This one requires something you didn't need for the previous design, rhythm. You need to be able to hit these buttons at the correct rhythm. Now because I'm a bit of a moron, I have set my rhythm up to be as fast as possible, which means I'm probably going to struggle to do it during today's clip, but we just need to press the buttons like that, and we get ourselves a redstone output. Now, as you can see, if I hit the button like this, you know, take my time about it, we don't get any form of redstone output. This one is actually probably one of the simplest ones of the bunch. Out the back of these buttons right here, we have monostable circuits, which are going to shorten our pulses. They run out into comparators, which run out into different redstone lines with different delays. So obviously the first button that you hit has the longest delay, and then the next button you hit has the middle delay, and then the most recent button that you hit has the shortest delay and they all run into this AND gate out the back here. And the idea is, is that all of the inputs, all of the button presses have to reach these redstone torches at exactly the same time to unpower all of this redstone, which will give us a redstone output. Color combination locks could be considered a little bit dated. I mean, I've been building them for pretty much the entire history of my YouTube channel, but I absolutely love this thing. All you have to do is you hit the button and it will cycle the colors around in a color reel. And then one of the colors, for example, this color right here will be the correct combination and it will give you a redstone output. Now this system only has seven possible combinations in this massive size right here. But obviously, if you chain them together, then you get seven times seven times seven times seven, and so on and so forth, and you end up with a pretty huge number of possible combinations. Now, if you just watch this thing function, you can see that the way that it cycles them around is actually quite interesting. I've tried my best to make this as compact as it possibly can be, and I feel like I've done a pretty decent job. I mean, it's only three blocks wide, and it's only four or five blocks deep, so really really pocket sized and what we do is we retract this block right here we then push it down and then all of the blocks get pushed across like that and that cycles around to both different reels we've got the color reel and then we also have the memory reel which decides which color is the correct combination so we go that is each and every one of my various different security systems all covered in today's video now i am going to show you how to build each and every one of them Prepare yourselves for more crazy redstone terminology and just mindless wittering on by me. So you want to get things started with a 6x9 area and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go 5 blocks up like this, placing a chest up at the top right there and then we're going to go all the way across like this without misplacing all of those blocks and you want to place a chest in like this with a hopper right there and then your line of hoppers are going across just like that. Now this right here is going to be your sort of item taking system. This is going to take the items across, and now what we have to do is we have to place in the item filter. So we're going to place blocks going in like this, and then you want to place in four sets of hoppers all pointing into those blocks over there. Now we're going to be taking comparator outputs from these top hoppers. You just want to place blocks going across like that. You also want blocks down here because these are going to have redstone torches on the backs of them. So you want to place redstone torches across like that. Then we're going to have all of the repeaters running into those blocks, nice and easy, and then blocks going across like this and blocks going across like that 
with redstone dust just like that. And then as I say, comparators running out from those hoppers right there. Next up, you just want to place a chest on this side and a trap chest on this side that is going to be storing all of the items that you place on the inside of the system. Then you just want to place droppers going across with hoppers running back into them. And those are going to be your RS null latches. So then we need to take comparator outputs from each one of those RS null latches and that's going to be going up into our AND gate which is going to be powered by these redstone torches with the blocks on top and then the redstone dust on top of that one. And this redstone torch right here is going to be our output for the entire circuit. Then all you have to do is take a comparator output from this hopper up at the top here and that's going to be running up like this into this button. So as you can see on this one, we've got ourselves a button. If we hit that, that will manually reset the system, meaning that all of the items that we have put through will be reset. And if you have the correct combination, those will travel back through and it will lock up the door basically. So that is that one right there. And if you want to, you can add the button running into that redstone line, but we're also going to take a redstone torch output from this block right here. And that's going to be going out like this, down a little bit. And then we're going to run the redstone line on top of all of these hoppers. And believe it or not, that is all of the redstone completed. That is the full system. So now we just have to place the items on the insides of each one of these droppers. So we're going to have any old item inside there. And then inside your hoppers, you want to place 18 of whatever you item you want to be the item that is correct. And then a bunch of junk items in these slots that nobody would be able to put inside the system. So for example, over here, we have got our block of iron, and then we also have block of irons dropped across. And you can do the same thing with diamonds. And then we've got lapis, and we have got gold as well. But you can use whatever items you really want to. Now, as I said at the start, this design right here consists of four sets of the original item frame design that I showed you guys at the beginning. So all you have to do is copy this circuit right here with the comparators like this, the repeaters, all in these directions. And you just need to repeat that four times. And on this side, as you can see, all we've done is mirror it. Then you just have to hook up the different inputs. And the way that we're going to do that, or the outputs, I should say, so that we can actually get ourselves an output from the combination lock. And the way that we do that is we're creating this little AND gate right here. So we just take a redstone output like this and a redstone output like this on both sides. And then we run that out into blocks and we run that out into blocks on that side as well. And then if we place a redstone line across like this and then a redstone torch, that right there is going to be your redstone output. And that redstone torch will only turn on if you have the correct music disc in each one of the jukeboxes. Now, the way that you decide what music disc is correct is by placing a certain number of items on the inside of the chest. And that number of items needs to match up with the signal strength given off by the music disc that you are placing on the inside of your jukebox. It is a little bit complicated to explain, so once again, I would highly suggest checking out my How a Comparator Works video if you're a little bit confused. Now this design is another one that doesn't really require a block by block tutorial. So I've actually slowed it down just a tiny bit from the one that I showcased in the video. We just have to go, mm, mm, mm. And as you can see, we get ourselves a redstone output. So we've got the buttons, they go into the hopper drop and monostable circuit. So we've got a dropper facing upwards, a hopper facing downwards, and an item on the inside of all of these droppers right here. Then we take comparator outputs, and they go into these three redstone lines. So they power these blocks, which then powers this redstone, this redstone, this redstone, which runs across into this AND gate, and this redstone torch is our output. Now this redstone line has got one tick, this one has got eight ticks, and this one has got 15 ticks which means that you have to hit each one of the buttons seven ticks apart from the previous one in this order right here. Now, the reason that it's that order, middle and then right and then left, is because this one has got the longest delay, this one's got the second longest, and this one has got the shortest delay. And we need to make sure that the button presses reach these redstone torches at exactly the same time. So this one takes the longest to get there, which means that you hit that one first, then this one takes the second longest, which means that that one should reach at the same time as this one. And then you hit this one last, which means that the delay is the shortest. So it will all reach all of the torches at exactly the same time, turning off this redstone dust. So all you have to do to make it is create this little section and then do your timings accordingly. I would suggest putting seven ticks between them because otherwise you're clicking like a madman. Then run them into an AND gate and you get yourself a redstone output. For this final design, we are definitely going to need a block by block tutorial. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to line up all of the pistons to get things started, because that is probably the most complicated part. So as you can see, 
we have got two pistons there, two sticky pistons right there, just above our little window that we've created. And then down at the bottom here, we're going to place a couple blocks like this, just so that we can place our regular pistons facing upwards right there. And then we're going to have to go a couple of blocks across once again and place two sets of regular pistons once again. So that is going to be the layout for our piston feed tape. And then we can run the input from our button. And that's going to be going out into a monostable circuit. And then we are going to have all of the redstone from this point forth. So let's start things off with the top set of pistons. We're going to have a block and then two blocks going up like this and some redstone dust right there. And then also we are going to have an upside down half slab facing in this direction with redstone dust on top once again. And then a repeater set to two ticks that's going to be going out into this block and we're going to have a line of redstone across the top. So if we hit this button, we should see that we'll get the sticky pistons and then the regular pistons. Cool, okay. Now for the other ones, what we have to do is place a couple blocks in like this, have a repeater set to three ticks, that's going to be going out into this block right here, and then we're going to have a block up like that, and a block down at the bottom with redstone dust on top of both of those. Okay, so that's those pistons wired up, then we want to go down to the bottom right here, and we're going to place in some redstone, then we want a repeater set to four ticks, and that's going to be going out into this redstone line, with once again, another repeater set to one tick, and a line of blocks going across just like that. And that should be our full circuit done. So we should get sticky pistons, and then the regular pistons, and basically a full cycle of blocks going on right there. I hope... I hope that's clear. Now it is time to fill in the color tapes. Now because I'm doing a tutorial, I'm not going to be using different colors, I'm just going to be using iron blocks, but you should get loads of different colors of concrete, so every time you hit the button, you get yourself a different color. And then also, you're going to have the memory feed tape, which is going to be made of glass, and that's going to be on the left-hand side. So we're just going to place in blocks going up like this, and you want to make sure they're placed in this formation right here. So a three by two area right there, and then one block on the top, and then we're going to have the glass as well, and we're going to make this block right here the memory block. So you're going to have a cauldron with some water just like that. Now the output for the memory reel is actually going to be right about here. So we're going to take an output through a block, then we're going to have a comparator right there, and when we hit this button we should see that both of these will cycle round just fine, and we will get a redstone output when this cauldron is in front of the block. So say for example, this block in front of the window was orange, that would be the correct combination. Now if you want these to be connected up together, so for example we've got two different designs right here, you just want to run each one of these out into a block with a redstone torch, and then you just want to create an AND gate between them. So we're going to connect both of these things up, and that means that this one, we currently have the correct combination, but right now we do not have the correct combination on this one, and we'll only get a redstone output if we get things correct on this one right here. So now it is correct, this is in front of the block, and that means that our redstone torch has turned off, which means our redstone line has turned off. So those things are now successfully connected up, and we have seven times seven possible combinations, which isn't too bad. And it looks amazing, so that's a positive. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is all I've got time for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please sure to hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.